Are you looking to apply for a New York cannabis business license, but not sure what the justice involved requirements are going to be? Look no further because we've got a lot of the answers right here. My name is Emily Seelman, and I am the founder and CEO of Cannabis Business Services. For years, my team and I have been helping clients all over the world navigate the cannabis industry. And we thought it was really important to create this educational series so that people could get digestible bits of information around cannabis business licensing. It's all so confusing. And so we really want to break it down for you. If you're interested in applying for a cannabis business license in New York, but you're not sure what the justice involved requirements are going to be. The justice involved requirements are built around the state of New York's mission to provide opportunities, lower barriers of entry, and other types of prioritization to individuals who have been harmed by prior cannabis laws in the state. To qualify as a justice-involved individual, you will have either had to have been the one with a cannabis conviction, or you'll have a team with at least one member who has a cannabis conviction. Now, it can be a person who has the cannabis conviction. They have to have been a resident of the state during that conviction, or they are the child of a person who has a cannabis conviction, or they have a child who it has a cannabis conviction. They've got a sibling, a grandparent, a legal guardian. There's a number of ways to prove it and to be com connected to an individual who has a prior cannabis conviction. So talk to your cannabis consultant and attorney today to determine how that conviction that you might have works within this industry. You have to show through documentation proof that your primary residence was in New York at the time of that conviction. So not just one of a few residences, but your primary residence in the state of New York at the time of the conviction. And another threshold you have to pass in order to be considered a justice involved entity or individual is that you have to have at least 10% ownership and control, not just ownership, not just control, ownership and control, at least 10% in a qualifying business. And we'll get to what qualifying means in a second for at least two years. So a qualifying business for at least two years with 10% ownership and control. Now, what's a qualifying business? A qualifying business can either be a for-profit entity or a non-profit entity. If it's a for-profit entity, you have to have at least 10% ownership and control for at least two years in the business. And you have to show at least two years of a net profit. That's for a for-profit business. A nonprofit has to be a registered 501c3 nonprofit with the IRS. So you can have charities, but charities aren't always nonprofits. First, you have to have intentionally serviced justice involved individuals. So they can't be just kind of a byproduct of what you do. Maybe you do a very broad type of outreach or nonprofit focus, and you happen to get some justice involved in individuals. This nonprofit has to focus on serving justice involved in individuals or intentionally service justice involved individuals. And the nonprofit has to service communities with high rates of arrest and incarceration related to cannabis possession. And on top of all of that, you have to show at least two years of a net profit. You have to show a history of creating vocational programs for justice involved individuals. You have to have at least five full-time employees and have officers or board members who are justice involved individuals. So that's a really high threshold to pass as a nonprofit. That's a lot of things to pass. On the for-profit, you just have to show that 10% ownership and control, just like the nonprofit, at least two years of net profit, just like the nonprofit, but it pretty much ends there. So the state could further refine these rules, but this is a pretty big threshold to pass if you're going to be considered a justice involved individual. So it's not just a matter necessarily of having a prior cannabis arrest. There's a lot more that goes into it and it gets very convoluted very quickly. We do this every single day of our lives. We live and breathe this industry. So of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Our number, our email address, we have intake forms for 15 minute free consultation on our website at www.cannabusinessservices.com. Or stay tuned into our social media platforms because that's where we're releasing a lot of our videos related to this educational series and helping individuals who are interested in applying to the New York market. So I hope this was beneficial for you. Again, if you're interested in the cannabis industry, please reach out to us today.